Hi folks, I'm Greg Jones and today at Midwest Outdoors we are covering the 2012 Border Walleye Challenge. We're standing on the pier at the foot of the lake in Ortonville, Minnesota. Behind me you got Big Stone City, the boats are lined up, they got five flights, full field of 125 teams. We're going to follow the action today, stay with us. See these guys working behind me, they're running the two common patterns we're going to see today. Guy in the front, he's pitching a crankbait, throwing chartreuse, the water's a little dirty, and then the guy in the back's pitching a jig. What they're looking to do is somebody makes contact, and then both guys are probably going to switch to whatever presentation's working. We just talked to these guys that just trolled by us. That's the other pattern you're gonna see here a lot on Big Stone Lake. They've got one small fish. We've talked to a few jiggers. They've got a few fish. Neither pattern seems to be dominant right now. It's a good example of how to find fish, though. If you look at these guys, they're trolling this outside break right down here. That boat right inside of them sitting up on that point there. Fish in uh, Dakota, western Minnesota, windswept lake. If they're not up here, they're gonna be out here. It's a good lesson in walleye fishing right there. We just saw Brett Hasselson and Richie Seidel actually pick up their first fish of the day. Oh, it's uh, late morning. That's kind of unusual for these guys, but we've got a tough bite going on with this weather change. Doesn't really seem like trolling or the shoreline's working too well. They did just set up, pick that fish up just like that. So these guys are good at trolling. We'll see what happens if they can get on them. Behind me is the team of Steve Arbogast and Mark Hartman. They're the first team we've come across that have six fish in the box, and they're actually doing something a little bit different. They're throwing jigs, they got twisted tails on them, a bright yellow in this dirtier water, but they're retrieving it like a crankbait. It's kind of a cross between the jig and the crankbait, but definitely working for them. They got six in the box. You know, when you're out here on these wind-driven lakes like this, to use your tools right, it's gonna help you catch more fish. You can see these guys, they're casting with the wind at the back. They got a drift sock out the back to slow them down. Then they're using their Minn Kota off the bow just to be able to pull themselves out. Behind me is Renee Marlick and Eric Lee. We talked to them earlier this morning. They were fishing the southern part of the lake. Weren't doing very well. They changed plans, must have moved up north here. Talked to them quick, they picked up two fish. So looks like the jig bite might be picking up a little bit as the cold front wears off. We just seen them pick up number three. That's three quick fish, probably 15, 20 minutes. The other thing about those fish is one of them is over 22 inches, so they're starting to feel a little better. Behind me is Cody Enger and Mandy Halrick. It's a good example of the type of teams that get started in tournament fishing. Young couple, you know, you see fathers, sons, fathers, daughters out here, husbands, wives. There's guys that have been fishing it for a long time. Really a low entry fee, but a really well-run event, and people love fishing it every year. Well, weigh-in's just around the corner. The guys are starting to head for the scales. We're going to head back and find out who the 2012 Border Walleye Challenge winner is. That's our new leaders. That's pretty stout, gentlemen. A little shy, 10.14. All right, for $3,500, here we go, folks. Not gonna do it, 938. Here's our champions. Check for $3,500, gentlemen. Good job. Let's give them a hand. This year's champs, South Dakota. Oh 
Folks, we're with Scott Arn. He was the MC of the event today. Scott, you did a great job on stage. Your walleye club puts on a heck of a tournament. Thank you. We worked really hard to put on a great experience for our fishermen. Yep. They had teams come from six different states as far away as Montana. We also got the South Dakota teams pulling that traveling walleye trophy back home over on the other side of the lake. Huh? We did. After three years of uh, Minnesota, they uh, won again to make it three to three apiece. Even up, yep. And to put a great tournament on, you need some help. We do, Greg. Uh, we like to thank Skeeter Yamaha, Doug Zink and Merlin, JJV's Bass, and Hummingbird Lake Master. Without them and their sponsorship, we really couldn't put this on. Again, we want to congratulate Tom Sagan and Troy Markle. They did a great job catching those fish in tough weather conditions. Big Stone's a heck of a fishery, a lot of walleyes to catch here. If you want to come and do it yourself, why don't you look up BigStoneWalleyeClub.com. They got information on next year's tournament or just coming to fish the lake. For Scott Arndt and everybody who put the event on today, I'm Greg Jones, Midwest Outdoors. We'll be right back.